Right, and welcome to uh, England and Wales, the SVP in England and Wales. Uh, it's great to see you again. In Khartoum, when I first got involved 20 years ago, yeah. and it is, believe it or not, it is 20 years ago yeah. now, in 1998, and, and um, uh, we had there then, we had what we call the farms, yeah. which were really kind of foster homes and vocational training centres. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And then we had the, the baby feeding, yeah. We had the medical centres, the Friday yes. clinics and yes. mobile clinics, yes. and, and uh, we had the water yeah. supply as well. So that was having a huge impact, impact on the population. On the population. People yeah. living, you know, there were two million people in the desert, weren't yeah, they, exactly. living rough. Yeah. Yeah. So that you, what you've done now is, you, because those um, uh, programmes are so successful, in the north. Uh, in the north, in, in, in Khartoum, you've taken those now and, and started them in the south. We have to rebuild the lives of people sure. through these projects, and this is what we have done. And I will come through mm. all these projects shortly. So, so let me get this clear. Yeah. But you, you say that, that um, you know, some of the boys that we've got, we're looking after now in the, in the Be in Hope, yeah. which we're going to come to, um, home and, and the vocational training centre. Yeah. They are really boys that could have been boy soldiers. Of course. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's wow. what is happening. And that is only a small number. What we are doing is more greater than that. Now, if I contrast two pictures, there was a slideshow here. You see when the war erupted, this young genera generation who didn't have any chances to attend any school anymore. because This was the war of... Of that started in 2013, that December. It started after you had just left 12 yeah. days. Yeah. So we said, okay, we, let's uh, uh, devise an approach. And this is what really happened. Mm. We opened up with your support and support of our other friends here in Europe to open up one of the biggest, not only in, the, in South Sudan, but in the region, one mm. of the biggest vocational training schools in the entire region of East Africa. They graduate yeah. from the courses with yes. their caps and gowns and they are so proud. Yes. The other thing is that um, attending these graduation ceremonies that you have every so often are people like government ministers and uh, important people. And That's right. Uh, just tell me what their reaction is when they see this. The community takes it as an opportunity, you see, mm. to give thanks to SBDP. Mm. Their children wouldn't have found such a chance. Mm. Government is uh, so appreciative. We have added another thing. Of course, when they graduate, we give them the tools. Yeah. And this is what we always proclaim. Right, that let's get it. Place, yeah, the be clear tool, on this. And then the, the work on with the tools. Yeah, be clear on this because I think <coughs> there's an opportunity uh, for uh, businesses in, in, in England and Wales, yeah. the UK. Uh, to, spon you know, to sponsor this because mm. what you're doing is you're training people in a skill. Yeah. And then you're saying, okay, you've learned uh, the skill, so here's some tools for you and overalls and so on to go out with yeah. and even start their own. That was an interesting point with starting their own business because uh, what I found was that uh, <coughs> some people have developed skills and they could go and be employed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. But other people, uh, other youngsters that came out, mm -hmm. would start their own businesses. Yes. With what, you know, in the trade, yeah, maybe yeah, electrician yeah, or yeah, plumbing yeah, or exactly. air conditioning or yeah, something, yeah, or yeah. motor That's vehicle. Mm -hmm. They start their own businesses. But not only that, but they would employ youngsters yes. who were coming after them. Exactly. So they, 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 that's it. That really is affecting the economy of the country. Yeah, isn't it, it? it is. So this is something that, mm. that business owners here mm. uh, might might want to kind of contribute to, uh, yeah, to the, to set up a fund or contribute <coughs> to the fund where people can borrow some money, exactly. start up a business, create mm -hmm. employment, get it there, and give mm -hmm. the money back. Yeah. And then that money there is there for the next mm -hmm. person or group yeah. that comes along. Brilliant. And the first we have just started it recently, but the first survey we did. Over 40 percent are now self-reliant. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Wow. They pay back the money yeah. and then they are running businesses. Mm. The clothes that I normally bring, I buy it from them. We manufacture bricks. Yeah. Uh, we manufacture uh, timber, window frames, and doors, and kind of mm. furniture, and so on. And my idea was <coughs> that uh, we can, if we built a, a house of some description. Yeah. 
to show how these material, building materials are to be used. We could then use that as a show house and yes. people could come I, along, I, exactly. contractors, other exactly. contractors would come along and buy the materials. Yeah, but that yeah. developed something, yeah. that's developed something different, isn't it? Uh, exactly. It's become uh, a guest house. Yes, I was really just about to delve into that aspect when we come to our IGPs. This is income yeah. generating projects. Right. Agriculture is the backbone of the country and it had been neglected for some reasons. You remember in the past, in the 70s, we were exporting coffee and tea to Europe. It has no way now to trace it, totally disappear. Mm -hmm. These are the things you want to sensitize the communities who mainly were agricultural. Mm -hmm. And this way the idea of this business training in agribusiness came up. Mm -hmm. We want to tell the community now subsistence agriculture has to change. You don't target the production or the consumption of the family when you are producing. What about the school's need for your kids? Where are you mm. going to get them? You don't have any other employment. Mm. Through agriculture, you, you get an investment that is worth it. Mm. That covers all the other areas. Mm. Come to baby feeding. When we made our survey in the area, when we relocated, when we relocated our projects there, we found out that every one of 11 children in the area had only one meal per day. Mm. And like 7% have no meal at all. The mm. family had to struggle. If they farm, they give. Mm. If they don't farm, they don't give. Mm. What could they do? Mm. So children were dropping into the streets to be subjected to the range of abuses mm. that you can imagine in a war torn country. So we solved this. We started with a small center in Lolobo with 300 babies. We have expanded now to over 1,000 that we wow. fed. Also, we have the project of the clinic. This right. clinic is situated in a vicinity, in an area where nobody under any circumstances could access any health services. You saw it, how far it is. Mm. One of the places with most prevalent diseases is so prone to outbreak of some diseases every, every year. And then we took that step and we, we, built, we, we built that clinic there. With the confession of the representative or minister when we opened the, right. the clinic. He said, guys, let me congratulate you. Mm. And he is a specialist doctor that worked in UK for 30 years. Mm. So he went back. I was surprised. He's in Norwich. He yeah. went back. He said, I've never seen a clinic well equipped. How many people does it look after this clinic? It varies from month to month. But we have the minimum in a good month would be 30. Mm. And it could go beyond 70 yeah. people per day. Yeah. And mainly... A 70 per a, day. 70 yeah. per day. Yeah. And mainly yeah. these are children. Mm. And I tell you a statistic. Very amazing. Most of the prevalent diseases in the area have reduced. Mm. The mortality rate, especially among the babies and infants, has reduced mm. in the area. Mm. I, can, I can still hear Pope John Paul <coughs> talking about dignity. Mm. And, and it is an important word because... Mm. Uh, one of the problems that I have when we go around the country, yeah. um, people from Africa might say to me, oh. you know, you shouldn't be talking about these people like that um, because you're kind of destroying the dignity. And mm. I say, well, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I've got to tell people about uh, the misery. babies who are starving yeah. and, mm. and the problems they've got to yeah. generate the income yeah. um, to, to get them to give us funds. Um, to give them the dignity. And I then, remember going <coughs> to the village of Korijik. Yeah, It's a typical village with the kind of um, conical roofs yeah. made out of exactly. straw. Exactly. Yeah. And what yeah. struck me most of all there was the community spirit where, mm. where the neighbours were looking after neighbours. After neighbours, yeah. Also, the, the SVDP was very present there yeah. in, in visiting people and supporting we, them. We have to make sure that we are in the midst of these people. Mm. Wherever there is need, as we are, that is, our, well, that, is, that is our work. So when this village was really attacked, it was a devastating oh. situation. Terrible. A lot of people killed, and then you saw even the graves. Mm. The community got scattered. But again, with our policy, we always try to put in the minds of the people in our projects that insecurity is a man-made thing. Yeah. And Ooh. we have to really build on security the other way around yeah. so that people feel they are secure. That's and right. we were able to bring them back to the village. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, very thank much you for having me once again. And with my You're always welcome here.
Elder. Thank you. Thank I, you. I often quote Michael <coughs> Palin when uh, in his, uh, I think it was Pole to Pole, the series that Michael Palin did, mm. and he went into Sudan. Mm -hmm. And his words were, nothing I have ever experienced in my life before could have prepared me for a visit to Sudan. Mm -hmm. And I very often quote that in some of my presentations. Yeah. And the other, th the other thing I tell people is that this is just absolutely extraordinary work being done by ordinary people. Yeah. Um, it is huge, it really is. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.